What is art? In the journey to understanding art, it is perhaps prudent to first ask a fundamental question, what is art? So let's begin our semester by asking the question, what is art? Art has been discussed in many different ways. Each of us might have our own personal definition of what art is. So what do you feel defines the question, what is art? Take a moment and write it down, as it will be interesting to look back over the next few months to see if your definition has changed. I'll wait a moment. While I hope that each of you have a broad definition of what art is, I want you to also realize that not everything is art. For example, imagine sitting on a beach watching a beautiful sunset over the ocean. Is the scene before you art? Is the colorful sky with illuminated pinks, mauves and magentas art? Or does there have to be something else involved? Well, according to most textbooks, including our own, yes, something else must be involved. One indisputable qualification is that a work of art is intentionally made by human hands, sometimes with the aid of machines, and was imagined before it was made. Therefore, according to this definition, this means that a sublimely beautiful sunset is not a work of art, but that a painting of the same sunset is. So, what if the painting of the sunset is a bad painting? Is it still a work of art? As with all things made by humans, measures of quality apply to works of art. These include technical skill and craftsmanship, originality and depth of the idea behind the work of art, the degree to which the finished work satisfies its intention or its purpose, and the level of aesthetic achievement. So let's look at each. Technical skills and craftsmanship can be taught, and we can see and appreciate them in works of art. Most times we can tell if something has been made well or has required a high degree of technical skill. It is also possible to assess originality of thought and depth of ideas. And the more art you are familiar with, the more readily you can recognize genuine originality. The same is true about measuring the degree to which a work of art satisfies the artistic intention or purpose set for it. The more you know about why it was made and what purpose it was supposed to serve, the better prepared you are to judge whether that work of art achieves its goal. It is the aesthetic qualities that are subjectively perceived and so are more debatable. There is a branch of philosophy called aesthetics, as already discussed in the introduction, that attempts to define what makes something art and to analyze the psychology of artists and the people experiencing art. Unfortunately, even with the philosophy of aesthetics, no one has ever come up with an entirely satisfactory explanation of what art is, and people have proposed all kinds of answers to the question. We can see by trying to answer what is art that art is difficult to qualify. No definitions are universal, timeless, and absolute. All definitions, particularly regarding art, are framed within larger systems of knowledge, and these systems shift and evolve. However, many scholars do agree that art provides a stimulating opportunity to explore the various conditions of our lives and experiences, and that the word art encompasses many meanings, including ability, process, and product. So what does this mean? As ability, art is the capacity to make things of beauty and sometimes things that are not pleasing to our senses, and things that stir us positively or negatively. It is creativity. Art as a process encompasses acts such as drawing, painting, sculpting, etc. It's the act of making art. And art as a product is the object, the finished object, a structure, a print, a photograph, a painting, a sculpture, a building. So knowing that art encompasses ability, process and a product also tells us that our sunset, no matter how beautiful, is not art. 
It may inspire an artist to create art, but it is, in and of itself, not art. Everyone's experience with art is unique. It is dependent upon personal experience, time, place and culture. Art can also make people uncomfortable, especially when they cannot understand it. Many people prefer that art be realistic and pretty. They expect art to look very much like the thing it represents, and they want art that is always pleasant and charming. But art is not always these things. Insisting that art be pretty limits art to one kind of expression. Because human experience is much richer, art should be free to reflect life in all its richness. As we can see, answering the question what is art can be challenging, but nevertheless our understanding and appreciation of art will be enhanced by asking questions, even if they are difficult to answer. While we cannot arrive at a single definition of what art is, we can come to understand art by knowing what art does. So our next question is, what is the function of art? We will examine several functions of art in our next lecture. We will not examine the artists or artworks in terms of art history or the context in which they were made, but rather the images are used to illustrate our relationship to art and how it functions within our life.